Part 7, Portfolio Strategy Review. As we've said earlier, financial planning is a process. Goals and objectives always need to be reviewed periodically in light of changing circumstances. Depending on your circumstances and the kind of in investments in your portfolio, a er er review may be required at least annually, perhaps quarterly, or even more frequently. Some reasons you may need to review your portfolio more than annually are, one, you recently got married, two, your spouse recently died, three, you've been out of work for more than three months, four, you need to liquidate investment assets to purchase a home, five, you just won the lottery, and six, you inherited a windfall. When you do choose to review your portfolio, you should answer the following questions. How do your investments do compared to similar investments of similar risk? Is it time to rebalance, tilt, or rotate your portfolio's asset allocation? Is it time to re re revise your investment objective, current saving plan, or financial goals? And basically, that's reviewing for you. Making sure that your investments keep up with your changing needs and circumstances. Just because we didn't spend a lot of time on this doesn't mean it isn't important. It's really important. Well, that's the last of the seven steps designed to help you gain control of your financial future. Dreaming, setting goals, financial planning, budgeting, saving, investing, and portfolio strategy review. We hope you've gained insight into the basics of personal finance through our presentation of the seven steps and that you're motivated to take charge of your financial future by formalizing your financial plan. But before we go, we're going to put all of this into perspective for you one last time. And to do that, we enlisted some help. The Senior Economic Advisor of Putnam Investments, Robert Goodman, said it succinctly in his last chapter of his book, Independently Wealthy, How to Build Financial Security in the New Economic Era, in which he offered 10 rules that can make you independently wealthy. One, start now. No matter where you are in life, there's no better time to start getting your financial ship in order than right now. Two, set realistic goals and objectives. If you set goals for yourself that don't make sense, then you'll just get frustrated when you don't meet them. Shoot for something that you can reach with a moderate amount of discipline and sacrifice. Three, choose a competent advisor. If you really do not, do not know what you are doing, or if you're nervous about getting started, get, get, get help. There are people out there who know how to help you. Four, educate yourself. By buying this tape, you've taken the first step in educating yourself. But remember, financial planning is a lifelong process, so keep educating yourself about changes and innovations. Five, pay yourself first. When you create a savings plan for yourself, you need to stick to it, even if it means you have to juggle other payments. Six, invest regularly. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Seven, Choose your investments carefully. Don't get suckered into every get-rich scheme that comes your way. The only way to make a proper investment decision is to do your homework and choose carefully. Eight, diversify. Do not put all of your proverbial eggs in one proverbial basket. Protect yourself with diversification. Nine, be an owner, not a lender. When you buy stock, you buy equity in a company. When you buy bonds, you buy debt in a company. In the long run, stocks usually outperform bonds. 10. Avoid temptation. There you have it. 